Virtual reality has always been an intriguing concept to us and one which we have a lot of fun with. I mean, if you check out Steam's new library of virtual reality games, you'll understand exactly what we mean. So today, we're gonna go down the rabbit hole. By the time we come out on the other side, hopefully, we'll know what to expect from the future of VR and AR. First up, what are things looking for like in the future of VR tech? So right now, we've got these big, bulky headsets that don't really look that cool and just feel a bit too... eh... No? So you gotta ask yourself, what do we have in store for tomorrow? Well, from what we can gather, VR tech and AR tech are going to join together to give its user a very immersive experience. In English, what we meant to say is that we're going to evolve from putting our smartphones onto our so-called VR headsets to using entirely tethered systems in standalone units. The standalone units are going to be doing all the heavy lifting so our PC don't have to. They'll handle the display and all the processing so that the user, that's us, can get a fully immersive experience without all the hassle we have to go through these days. However, to get to that point, we're gonna have to hold our horses because experts estimate that it'll take at least another three to five years. We know that's a shame. But don't worry, applications like Pokemon Go are already implementing augmented reality into smartphones. It was the first of its kind. No wonder it created such a buzz, eh? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. The new AR VR tech we're expecting to get our hands on in the coming years will be completely customizable, such as AR glasses with LTE capabilities. So you can kiss your smartphones goodbye. Next up, what, how, and where? So to figure out how it all started, we're going to have to travel back to 1938. This is when Charles and Whetstone created the holy grail of the VR world, the starting point for Pokemon Go, his stereoscope, now people being people, quickly realized that so much could be done with this technology and started working on it a lot. Fast forward to a couple of years down the line and you have Edwin Link's Flight Simulator. Keep going down the rabbit hole and you'll see a bunch of early inventions related to VR tech fly by you. You'd see Morton Heilig's Telesphere Mask, Ivan Sutherland's Sword of Democles, VR headset, and of course, what we have today, the universally loved Oculus Rift. The funniest part about all of this is the fact that just five years, tech like the Oculus Rift will look primitive as the stereoscope thanks to the rapid speed and tech it advancing at. But for now, we have to slow down because this type of tech still costs an insanely high amount. Coming up, so what are we doing with this tech right now? So right now, we're kind of doing the best we can to make this technology as immersive as it can be, but honestly, we're limited by what we can do with it just because we haven't cranked the tech wheel far enough to get a real kick out of it, you know? Apps like Pokemon Go are a perfect example of how we're trying to implement augmented reality into our everyday lives. They're doing quite well, too. When it first came along, it was the most popular game on the planet for a year straight. That's a heck of a long time to be able to stay relevant. Another popular example of using VR is for gaming. The Oculus Rift headset provides provides the most advanced form of VR gaming out there, and it's really fun to play with. Of course, considering the tech isn't as far along as we'd want it to be, the Oculus Rift is taxing on your average PC, but hey, we make it work, don't we? Resident Evil recently came out with its first step into VR gaming, and the game was so well designed, it was the best game on Steam for almost a few months. That's how big of an impact this tech has on us every time it makes its way onto the mainstream market. Finally, what are companies planning for the future of AR VR tech? So, now that we know what to expect from tech in the coming years, we're left scratching our heads and wondering what major companies are doing to help us in the advancing tech. The answer is not much. A recent survey done with the biggest tech companies shows that around 50% of them haven't even come up with an initial plan. From that we can tell, it's because of the state of the market concerning VR and AR tech right now. It's too volatile to invest in. We're hoping that that, that can change in the coming future. A word of advice for any major company looking to dip its toes into the market would be for it to partner up with an experienced vendor so that they can provide end-to-end -end product development and also high-level engineering capabilities. According to another survey done with major tech companies, almost 90% of them expect said vendors to meet required AR VR capabilities, which include developing plans for full manufacturing capabilities such as companies coupled with high-level vendors who are providing the right product would allow them to focus fully on providing an out-of-this-world experience to anyone lucky enough to get their hands on this tech. 
We don't know exactly how long this will take, but what we can tell you is that when it does happen, it'll probably be the biggest thing to happen for humans since fire was discovered. Next in other news, should electric vehicle charging stations be on a per demand basis? So these days, it's like every time you leave the house, maybe even for a short walk, you're likely to see at least one Tesla on the road while getting back home. If you own such an electric vehicle, you're probably wondering the same as us. Are there enough charging stations? Major companies have been plagued with the same question and are looking to come up with an answer quickly. So to understand the solution, we'll have to take a look at what we've got right now. There are two main ways to charge your car, slow charging and fast charging at stations. Now, if you're anything like us, you'll almost always prefer the latter. Now with the number of electric vehicles growing in the consumer market, plan for urban EV charging stations is also becoming a whole lot more mainstream. Researchers have even come out with numerous mathematical models to figure out how to optimally plan these stations. All we know is, we're all for it and can't wait for it to be fully implemented. If it means we can take our Tesla without worrying about the battery, yippee! Next is Silicon Carbide, that one solution we've all been waiting for. So two major things are happening in our world right now. The number of electric vehicles available on the consumer market is growing and the need for renewable energy sources has become critical. Climate change is real, folks, and it's not doing us any favors at the moment. That coupled with depleting fossil fuel resources means we need to come up with a solution fast. So that begs the question, what do we got? Well, thanks to our innovation in battery technology and silicone carbide systems, we may finally have a viable solution on our hands. So what does that mean, you ask? Let us break it down for you. At the very front, we've got new groundbreaking solar energy systems that are going to be accounting for 60% of the renewable energy sources we'll have shortly. These systems have gotten so advanced that the International Energy Agency predicts that renewable capacity will increase by 8% in 2022. That's insane to think about. That we're so close to switching over from fossil fuels completely? Kudos to science, eh? Finally, is the transition to 5G in trouble? Okay, so it's been almost a year now since the advent of 5G technology is announced. We mean 4G is cool and all, but imagine having gigabyte internet speed at your fingertips. We can see you drooling over the thought of that from here. However, this transition is proving to be more of a hassle than originally considered, and this put the future of 5G technology at stake. Remember when people thought COVID-19 was because of 5G and started destroying cell towers? Yeah, that may have played a small role in our current predicament. So, the plan right now is to apply small cell landscapes that will allow us to get the high internet speeds we're looking for. However, it's easier said than done. The transition will be tough, but it can happen with time. As far as 5G is concerned, we couldn't be more hyped. Just imagine how awesome and easy streaming movies would get. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think VR technology will look like in a few years? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.